Um, hi everyone, my name is Emily O'Dowd and I'm going to be speaking uh, to you about the online postgraduate diploma and MSc in human factors and patient safety. So as I said, my name is Dr. Emily O'Dowd. I am one of the senior lecturers on the Human Factors and Patient Safety program and the academic lead for this program. Um, so my background is in psychology and I approach the program with that perspective and, and bringing that human factors experience and applying it to healthcare. Great, so the learning outcomes for this program, um, we have a few here just up on the slide, but mainly they are to advance the practical skills to drive safety and quality improvement in acute hospital setting. So we really want our learners and scholars to come away from the program with the actual practical skills to apply to their workplaces and drive that safety and quality improvement that's so vital to our healthcare system back in their workplaces. Um, we also want to develop scholars interpersonal and non-technical skills to support safe and effective patient care. So this is your communication and leadership skills um, that all contribute and are so vital to safe and effective patient care. Thirdly, we want to develop participant skills to conduct high quality patient safety research in healthcare. So this is something I'm very passionate about. And throughout the program, you do get an opportunity to build on your research skills or develop research skills if it's something you've experienced in or not experienced in before. Um, we do try to, to build up your confidence and skills in conducting high quality patient safety research within a healthcare setting. And finally, and I suppose underlying all of it, we want to develop your knowledge of error, risk and safety in healthcare. So um, the theories underpinning error and risk and safety, the human factors contributing to safety in healthcare, and um, I suppose give you that grounding and foundational knowledge in all of these theories that you can then start to apply to your work in healthcare. So a bit of background, I suppose, on the course structure and some key information about the program. So the program is set at a level nine on the National Frameworks for Qualification. Um, it is a totally online and flexible program. So it is part time and it's fully online since um, about 2020. Um, is the postgraduate diploma is made up of five modules, um, which is 60 credits. And then if you do choose to go on to complete the MSc, you have an additional 30 credits made up of a research dissertation, which takes place in year two. So the program can be undertaken, as I said, as a certificate, diploma or a master's. The certificate is an exit award after the first two modules. Um, however, most of our scholars will tend to go on to complete at least the postgraduate diploma, if not the MSc. We've actually had a big increase in people continuing to the full master's programme lately. Um, so it's 100% online and part time and there is approximately one interactive day each month. This will depend based on the modules. Some are shorter than others. Um, but you have about two to three per module of an online interactive day and it works out at about once per month. The rest of the program then includes, I suppose, didactic teaching um, and then self-directed learning as well. So discussion boards where you're interacting with the other scholars on the program. Um, reading, independent reading. Um, we offer a lot of videos and resources online through our virtual learning environment, Moodle. Um, and it's really, it's kind of structured in such a way that it's appropriate for people who are working full time and working in healthcare, that you can do a lot of this on your own, in your own time. Um, I suppose as well, we're also very conscious of people's work shifts and, you know, when we do offer those online interactive days, we do record them as well because we're conscious, uh, you know, it's not always possible to get a certain day off while you are working full time as well. So here's a little bit more detail about our modules. Um, we have five modules in year one and then a sixth module, which is the research dissertation in year two for the MSc programme. 
Um, so you can see just a, a few details about them. We start off with module one, which is error and safety in acute healthcare. And this is where we really, I suppose, go in depth into the theories of human factors and patient safety. Um, what is a system's perspective on patient safety? How can we learn about error and risk and start to learn how to then improve these and, and make healthcare safer for patients and for staff? Then we go into our personal effectiveness and non-technical skills model. So we touch on leadership styles, um, the factors that contribute to improving your own personal effectiveness as a healthcare leader, and then also team performance in healthcare as well. So a lot of communication skills, non-technical skills, um, and that S aspect of human factors and patient safety. Next up, we go to leadership process and quality improvement. So again, taking a look at the theoretical principles underpinning quality and safety improvement in healthcare and how you can start to or develop on your skills that you already have, how you can lead this change within healthcare. Our fourth module is professionalism and advanced communication. So again, we explore communication skills, um, including relationships with patients and also um, with colleagues as well. And then um, we kind of introduce the concepts and practice of advanced communication, such as shared decision making, open disclosure, end of life care, all of which are very topical and relevant in healthcare at the moment. Um, and consistently, I suppose, the guidelines and, and laws around the world are changing on these um, quite frequently, so it's it's kept up to date, and you, we have experts to in to speak on these topics as well, which is really helpful. Then our fifth module and final module for the postgraduate diploma is research methods. So, as one of the learning outcomes was to kind of build your skills and develop your skills in research in um, in human factors and patient safety, um, the research methods module is actually very core to that. So. If you have no experience with research or if you have, you know, quite a lot of experience with research, it's still going to be very applicable. It's going to enable you to critically analyse research papers in the field, how you can assess evidence, start to understand the methods that are used in this field in uh, human factors and patient safety for research. And then if you do choose to go on to year two, it provides a really solid foundation for your own research. So that's module six is your advanced research methods and dissertation. And that is, I suppose, your kind of independent research project that you will complete as part of your MSc project. Um, so for the dissertation, scholars are supervised by an expert in the field, whether that's to do with the methodology or the topic. And they are encouraged to complete their own program of research. And a lot of scholars have gone on to publish this research or indeed brought in their projects into their workplaces and applied them to their workplaces as well. So a really useful and practical, I suppose, aspect to the MSc program. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, our program is 100% online. And this, I suppose, with the online teaching, we use a number of different methods to ensure that it's engaging and that you still feel connected to the rest of your group. So that's a, consistently the feedback that we get on the program is that they, they still feel, scholars still feel connected to their classmates, which is really important when you're um, doing, you know, a program of study. And we really, we really encourage this. So our weekly discussion boards are a great place to interact with your peers and classmates and also the group projects. So we're really conscious when um, setting the group projects and, and assigning groups, we make sure that it's an interprofessional group of scholars and we do change them every module as well so that you get to work closely with as large a group as possible um, across the, the modules in year one. Um, as mentioned earlier, we have our online interactive days. So these are live sessions with experts where they um, will deliver a lecture. There'll be group work within the online day. And these are typically for, about, for I suppose, a full working day. So about 9.30 in the morning Irish time to uh, 4.30 in the afternoon, again, Irish time. 
And as I said earlier, these are fully recorded. So if, you know, someone gets called into work, it's it's absolutely no problem. We can work around that and they can watch re- recordings back. We do recommend that you come to them in person or uh, we do recommend that you come to them while they are live because you get the opportunity to interact with the experts. However, um, we understand that that's not always possible. Um, we also have online content. So this is your kind of self-directed learning. So we have key seminal papers, optional readings, videos, um, and kind of other resources to explore w- in your own time as well. And finally then, for the majority of the modules in year one, you'll also have a written assignment. So this is um, a piece of individual work. It's a piece of writing. So we do expect a high standard of academic writing, but we support scholars who are maybe not used to this type of writing, have maybe not done it in a while. um, And we have a lot of resources online to support this as well. Okay, so who can apply to the programme? The eligibility criteria of the programme are are here on uh, the screen. So the programme is suitable for those working in an acute hospital setting, including surgeons, physicians, anesthesiologists, emergency medicine doctors, obstetricians, pharmacists, nurses and midwives working in healthcare, as well as safety and quality managers. Now, we stay here working in an acute hospital. However, we have had... Um, scholars in the past who are working in different sectors within healthcare, so for example in pre-hospital care, um, people who have previously worked in hospital settings but are now working in the community in maybe a, a risk or safety and quality role. So if you're uncertain about the eligibility or whether you are eligible for the programme, please do get in touch with us and we'll kind of look at this on a case by case basis to make sure that the content is relevant for you and that it will actually contribute to your work going forward. So we're very lucky in the uh, postgraduate diploma in human factors and patient safety that we have a quite a large international footprint, I suppose, really facilitated by going online as a programme. Um, we have, over the, the past number of years, had scholars from over 20 countries outside of Ireland, which is really fantastic. Um, these include Australia, the United Arab Emirates, Sweden, UK, Germany. Um, it really it gives us this different perspective into healthcare and, and quality and patient safety in healthcare. I suppose, you know, we're we're working within one system, but it's great to share those insights across systems and learn from other healthcare systems, you know, how things can be improved, how we can make patient care safer, and what are maybe some of the different factors and barriers to safe care a- across the world. So, um, yeah, we have more than 200 alumni who are improving human factors and patient safety worldwide. And we're really lucky as well in that we have um, a human factors academy. So all of our alumni are automatically enrolled in the academy. And um, through this, we're building, I suppose, a, a network of um, human factors Um, connections and people who you could potentially collaborate with in the future. So um, trying to build that community of knowledge and and, um, share our learning across the globe as well. So speaking of alumni, um, you can see a number of our alumni here on screen. So what are alumni doing now? Um, I guess primarily they're making a difference and we're really proud of the work that they're doing. Um, So Uh, As you can see there, an understanding of the theory around patient safety errors and the individual and system level factors is vital for healthcare leaders. Alumni of the programme have published their research, brought their learning back to their workplaces and even used the programme to progress within their own area of work. We, you know, very often have scholars who are currently on the programme or alumni of the programme who mentioned that they have been promoted within work thanks to completing this programme of study. Um, You can see Sue Markey up at the top up here. She has presented her research for 
that she completed as part of her MSc um, at a number of different national conferences so far. So the Irish Human Factors and Ergonomics Society Conference and the fourth national Human Factors and Patient Safety Conference held in RCSI. And she's just been accepted to present at HEPS 2025. So this is a European level conference um, being held this year in Dublin. And she is working on publishing not one, but three papers out of her MSc research. So, um, you know, there's so much that can be done. She's also moved roles within um, her own work and is, is bringing that learning back to her hospital and her hospital group. So um, really, you know, amazing the amount of work that these people are doing. Our scholars are typically leaders in healthcare already and then are going on and bringing this knowledge to back to those roles and sharing it amongst um, their hospitals. So um, with that in mind, I suppose we have a video which is the story of one of our alumni, uh, Yvonne Young, which we're now going to show to you. Thank you all so much. Hello, my name is Yvonne Young and I'm a nurse. I'm a Group Assistant Director of Nursing with the UL Hospitals Group and I am also a member of the National Sepsis Team and I am a member of the Advanced Nursing Platform with the Global Sepsis Alliance. I undertook the MSc in Human Factors to enhance my knowledge and expertise in the area of patient safety and I want to do everything I can possibly do to make a difference in my area of work and to enhance patient safety and facilitate staff being able to come to work and being able to do their work safely. I have a special interest around the escalation of the deteriorating patient and the facil facilitators and barriers to early and appropriate escalation. The MSc has given me a completely different lens to how I look and approach things, how I do case, patient case reviews, how I undertake QI projects, how I do audits, and also around the development of clinical support tools. You cannot have a true understanding of patient safety without having a true understanding of human factors. Undertaking an MSc in Human Factors has given me a greater appreciation and understanding of many things such as systems, the power and importance of culture, human behaviours and how human beings interact with each other, psychological safety, situation awareness, the impact of civility and incivility, stress, burnout, teamwork and much, much more. I feel the MSc has increased my own self-awareness, and it has given me access to like-minded community and to experts in patient safety from around the world. And that connection has been invaluable to me. Engaging with like-minded colleagues, it energizes me and drives me to continue to do what I can do to improve healthcare. The virtual aspect of the course makes it much more accessible and user-friendly. And the course facilitators, I must say, are extremely supportive and very mindful that the majority of participants are working full-time in busy and demanding jobs in healthcare. We cannot eliminate risk, error, and human infallibility in healthcare, but we can optimize best practice and constantly review how we can moderate or reduce risk. But we can't do that without including the science and expertise of human factors so we can optimize patient outcomes. I do feel that the MSc in Human Factors Patient Safety has been invaluable to me on both a personal and professional level.